Pale, first I want to thank you for coming back to DC for its Advocacy City Day again this year and for bringing some of your friends along with you. We're happy you're here. Well, thank you. You know, for me, it's uh, last year to be just part of the delegation was wonderful and very inspiring, but to, to be a co-chair and take a leadership role this year and being asked to do that, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a wonderful uh, honor for me because it's, this is an issue arts advocacy that's so near and dear to my heart and it's, 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 it's something that I live every day uh, so it's vital for me. Well specifically related to that as a co-chair if there's one sentence that you could say today to every member of Cong Congress about funding the arts in America what would it be? Well as you know you know my my work my foundation the Manifesto Destiny Foundation we work with young people and so uh, the arts and arts education has been shown to me, and we have the studies that show it, um, the empirical data, but we also just have the non-empirical, my own experience working with kids, that if you incorporate arts and arts education into their curricula, the most disadvantaged, uninspired, or, 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 or so-called um, student from an under so-called underperforming school, they light up and they, they absorb information. So. If you want to save this country's children, this is the line. If you want to save this country's children, you support arts advocacy and arts education funding wholeheartedly. That sounds great. That's it. Great. Thank you. Um, and speaking about your Manifest Your Destiny movement, and you work with uh, kids all the time, the next generation, when you talk with them about expressing themselves through the arts, what do you say? What kind of advice do you give those kids? Well, you know, we talk about a lot of different things. Part of the program, my Summer Empowerment Academy program of my Manifesto Destiny Foundation, is including arts into what they're learning because part of the part of the problem. I look back at my own life, and I came up out of the public school system, but I, the public schools I went to, they had theater classes. Mm -hmm. They had I had to to learn the recorder, you know, the, the, <laughs> the public school flute, they called it, the, you know. Um, I, I was exposed to, to painting and drawing classes in those same schools, because the, the schools are still there, in those exact same schools, none of those classes exist anymore, none. And I promise you, uh, but for that exposure, I wouldn't be living the life I'm living today. And that's what we have to think about. We have to think about the fact that there's a chain reaction. There's, there's, there's a chain reaction of positive, uh, positive results that come out of an individual's life when they're exposed. It's not about expecting that every person be, you know, is going to write a Mozart concerto. That's not what arts education, arts advocacy is about, in my opinion. It's about actually making better people, mm -hmm. making a better citizen increasing the opportunity for them to be successful. And if you're, and no matter where you are, I like to meet people where they are. No matter what you think about your political side of the aisle, um, there's something about arts advocacy that fits. For instance, I know a number of, of, of folks who are political that, that really care more about small business creation, small business generation. And for me, um, I can tell you just firsthand, I live in a place where 10 years ago, 15 years ago, all there were, were there was a theater, a few arts galleries, a few artisan places, and lofts. And now, you, 15 years later, the attraction of people wanting to be in these areas where there are artists, where there are things that they can see and be fed artistically, um, out their front door, it's one of the most vib vibrant communities in my city now. Mm. And you have Starbucks, you have small businesses, you have mom and pops that have come in to this. And so it's increased our tax base, um, it's helped small business generation, and it's all because there were arts that were there and opportunities for people to touch something that was artistic. Um, and so that's, that's just a general business development side of it um, from my experience. And so there's, there's so many different ways we can talk about hmm. the value of arts and arts advocacy. And, and, and so that's what I love about it, because it doesn't leave anybody out. Now, when you, when you think about your life, and you, is there a particular artist or art experience that has inspired you? Just You remember leaving and just blowing your mind or, or reading something or hearing something? What, if you had to think about what's inspired you as an artist? Oh, well, you know, I, I actually read a letter in the board meeting uh, just a few minutes ago from a young man 
who had written me a letter from jail. And he talked about my book, Letters to a Young Brother, mm -hmm. that he had read in jail. And he said that it basically has ch shifted his view. And he, he basically said in the letter that if he'd had that book before, he wouldn't be in jail. Um, now, let's, that book is a series of letters that I wrote to this fictional young man. So it's a, you know, it's a story book. Mm -hmm. It was inspired by a book called Letters to a Young Poet by the poet Rilke, the German poet, Rainer Maria Rilke, who wrote a series of letters to a young poet who asked him, you know, should he be a poet? So from the 1800s, fast forward to 2012, mm. poetry and the artistry of this German poet inspired me because when I was young, I was gifted his book, Letters to a Young Poet. It's always stuck with me. I was inspired to write a book based that was very similar, based on modern day version was what I what I decided I wanted to do. And then it reaches a young man in Louisiana who's in jail. And hopefully his life is improved. And so we can start to see that if we don't support artists, if we don't encourage artists, these lines don't happen because art, and the beautiful thing about art is that great art, there's legacy. It lasts over multiple generations. Mm -hmm. And so it has impact, impact, impact impact. It's not just a one-off. Mm -hmm. And that's what's so special about art, I think. Um, and that's what's so, that's why it's so important that we support anything that has to do with, with, with the arts. Well, thank you so much for talking with us. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you.